Apple just officially announced the 2023 Worldwide Developers Conference, which means that we now know the official release date for iOS 17 at Beta 1, along with the potential reveal date for Apple's long-awaited mixed reality headset. So in this video, we're going to talk about iOS 17 and the latest leaks and rumors surrounding it, along with everything to expect from this Worldwide Developers Conference. Okay, so before we get into the serious stuff, let's have a little bit of fun and look at the graphic, because as you know, Apple always includes Easter eggs in their event invites and this one is no difference so let me know if you see anything does anything jump out at you right once you see this invite because it sure does look like a representation of the highly anticipated headset. So the little bars could be reflections of like the headset. The colors could just be a representation of the high quality and vibrant colors that you're gonna see with the high-end displays that are gonna be packed inside this headset. So it seems very obvious to me that this is a hint at that upcoming mixed reality headset. But what do you think? Are you seeing something that I'm not in this invite? Let me know your theories down there in the comments below. Anyways, moving on to the dates. So just as Apple does every Every year, the Worldwide Developers Conference will be taking place on the first full week of June. So it starts on June 5th and goes through the week until June 9th. It's going to take place at the Apple Park. And just like last year, it will be a virtual event with developers and students getting the opportunity to watch the pre-recorded keynote live on June 5th. And of course, take part in the other activities throughout the week. Now for us, the only date that matters here is June 5th. That is the day of the keynote that we're gonna see live streamed. And also the day that we are going to see iOS 17 beta one get released for developers. And just like I do every single year, I will be live streaming this event here on my YouTube channel. I'll also be covering the new features in iOS 17 before anybody else. Last year, I was the first person on YouTube to show some of the hidden features in iOS 16 since I was live streaming and was showing you guys everything in real time right after updating. So if you want to see that with iOS 17, make sure you are subscribed to the channel down below and tune in on June 5th. So anyways, in addition to iOS and iPadOS 17, we will also be seeing the new features in tvOS 17, watchOS 10, and macOS 14. And in addition to all of those, we could also be seeing version 1.0, the first developer beta of version 1.0 of the new mixed reality headset, which we're hearing that the software is going to be called XROS. So it could be XROS. 1.0 and that is going to be very interesting because i have a feeling that we're going to see weekly betas for a very long time for xros because again it's a brand new you know system it's a brand new software it's a brand new hardware there are going to be tons of bugs and tons of things that apple's going to push out you know over the span of years at this point so i really cannot wait to get my hands on that software and of course i will be bringing some of those videos here to the channel as well talking more in depth about that software anyways we'll talk more about that in a minute but let's talk about ios 17 and some potential new features and changes that we could see with this update. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is a feature that is most definitely coming to iOS 17. And the reason I say that is because it's EU law. Apple has to comply with the EU law. And that, of course, is the addition of third party app stores. So forever since the iPhone has been out, Apple developers, you know, and everybody who has an application in the App Store has to go through the App Store. They have to pay Apple their 15 to 30 percent, you know, for all in-app purchases and everything. But starting in 2024, that's going to change. And that's going to be a huge deal for developers, especially those who make a ton of money with in-app purchases, because now they're going to make minimum 15 to 30 percent more because they're not going to have to pay Apple that 15 to 30 percent fee that you have to do on every transaction. So that's going to be coming to the iPhone in iOS 17 at some point in 2024 when that law gets put in place. So it might not be there in the first developer beta for iOS 17. It might not even be there in the first public you know, release of iOS 17, but it is coming sometime in 2024. Now, moving on to some iOS 17 leaks and rumors. First off, I have to say that software leaks are infinitely harder to obtain than hardware leaks. It's almost impossible for software leaks to come about these days in terms of iOS. Apple has really kept a tight lid on that for the past several years now. So we don't usually see like really legitimate, very specific leaks of features until the week leading up to the Worldwide Developers Conference and leading up to that reveal of iOS 17 this year. So just keep that in mind when I talk about these features, these leaks and rumors. So first off is Mark Gurman over at Bloomberg. And he originally said months ago that 
iOS 17 would be a very minor update, focusing primarily on stability, since most of Apple's focus is going to be on that XROS software for the headset. So lately, however, he did say that Apple has shifted their strategy to include more features. So here's what he said in a recent tweet. When Apple set out to develop iOS 17, the initial thinking was to call it a tune-up release, one focused more on fixing bugs and improving performance than adding new features. The hope was to avoid the problems of iOS 16, an ambitious update that suffered from missed deadlines and a buggy start. But later in the development process, the strategy changed. The iOS 17 release is now expected to boast several, quote, nice to have features, even if it lacks the tent pole improvement like last year's revamped lock screen. The goal of the software, codenamed Dawn, is to check off several of users' most requested features. So this is pretty vague and doesn't really tell us anything about iOS 17, but I guess if there is something good to come out of this, it is that Apple is focusing more on bringing features to iOS 17 instead of just having a very stability-focused update, kind of like we had with iOS 12, which Honestly, I wouldn't mind having another stability focused update like iOS 12. I thought it was great to have back then. Now on the flip side of thing, we do have some more specific features and changes that could be coming to iOS 17 via a leaker on Twitter. So you can see this one right here says that we might finally see a close all option to close all currently open applications with one click. And this is something we've been wanting for a long time on iOS. So we could possibly be seeing that on iOS 17 or this one where he says, we will get a new control center, maybe referring to a new design, along with more changes to the lock screen and the home screen. So still not super specific besides the close all features with the click of a button that could be cool to have. But you know, again, don't expect any major, major, you know, legitimate leaks until the week leading up to the Worldwide Developers Conference. Some of them could come earlier, but usually we don't see the, you know, overflow, the influx of them until that week leading up to the conference. Now, aside from new software, what else can we expect to see at at this event. And the first thing is, of course, what we mentioned at the top of this video and what that invite could be referencing a new Apple mixed reality headset. So we're not sure on the exact name just yet. The rumors right now are Reality One and Reality Pro. One of those two could be the name of this headset. So we've heard about this headset for several years now, and this event could make for the perfect release or the perfect unveiling of this headset. It is a software focused event. And of course, that headset is nothing without great software. So it's going to be a great time to show developers, you know, what they can do, what they can build with XROS and what they can do with this headset. I can see Apple announcing this headset, you know, during the pre-recorded keynote, the pre-recorded event, and then they have all week to teach developers about the software. They don't really have to spend a ton of time on stage talking about the software. I'm sure they will want to, but they don't need to spend, you know, like two hours talking about it because I'm sure there's going to be a lot included in it where it could be two hours if they wanted it to be. And what's also interesting is that Apple's VP of Worldwide Developer Relations also said that the Worldwide Developers Conference 23 is going to be our biggest and most exciting yet. And they don't say that every year. So this could also be a very minor hint that that headset is coming. So I am very excited for this headset and I hope they do announce it at this event. Now, aside from the headset, what else can we expect to see in terms of hardware from this event? And there are a couple of other products we could see. So first off is a silicon based Mac Pro. We've heard about this for a very long time now, but Apple has delayed it time and time again. We could also be seeing the new M3 MacBook Air both in the 13 inch and also a new 15 inch size. So I think any of those are really a possibility. And last year we did see the M2 MacBook Air. So we did see that M2 chip get unveiled at the Worldwide Developers Conference. So I think it is, you know, a likelihood of seeing that again this year, except for this time with the M3 chip. It could be kind of a tradition for Apple to unveil the new chip every year at the Worldwide Developers Conference. And if you wanted to attend this event in person, which obviously it's not a live event, but you will be able to watch the keynote, the pre-recorded keynote live with others around you and Apple themselves at Apple Park. So it would be pretty awesome. That's like a bucket list item, at least for me. But if you want to go, you might be able to. So Apple is actually doing kind of like a lottery where they will be randomly selecting people to attend. And if you want to enter, you have to be a part of one of these four groups. You have to either be enrolled in the Apple Developer Program, be an Apple Entrepreneur Camp alumni, be a Swift Student Challenge winner from 2020 to 2022, or be a current Apple Developer Enterprise Program 
program member. And you have until April 4th at 9 a.m. Pacific time to enter into this lottery. I really wish I could go, but I need to be here for you guys to record the event and, you know, talk about iOS 17 and all the new products that Apple might announce at this event. But, you know, if you belong to any of those groups, I would highly recommend signing up to go. That is like a bucket list item if you are a big Apple fan. So that is all of the info that we have right now on the Worldwide Developers Conference 2023. And also, again, the official release date for iOS 17 Developer Beta 1. If you enjoyed this video and if you're looking forward to iOS 17 coverage, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and also make sure to subscribe down below if you have not done so already. And also, don't forget, mark it on your calendars. June 5th, I will be going live here on YouTube to cover the Worldwide Developers Conference and, of course, hang out with you guys for several hours as we do every year. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.